Intel's 11th generation of desktop CPUs haven't been out long, but they also haven't been received all that well. And honestly, most of the time while watching the reviews and while writing my own, I spent most of it thinking about what Intel's next generation of chip will have to offer, because this one doesn't offer all that much. Now don't get me wrong, especially in their mid-range, the, the i5, say 11400F, that looks to be a really impressive chip from a, a value standpoint and from the performance it offers, and especially since AMD doesn't have anything in that price bracket right now, well, that's a great option. But if you look at their i9 or even their i7, the words dumpster fire have been used many times, and that's probably putting it lightly. Like I said, I spent most of my time while reviewing especially the i9 thinking about the, the new generation, the, the 12th gen, what that will bring. And so I thought I would look at, well, take a look at both what Intel is rumored to be bringing and what AMD has to offer to counteract that. Now this is a bit of a, a new style, new look at things, so feel free to let me know what you think of it in the comments down below, and feel free to let me know in your thoughts on the things that I'm talking about as well. Also, for any of the, the rumor mill stuff that I'm talking about, I'm leaving links to that, uh, the sources that I'm using in the description down below if you wanna read up a bit more, so feel free to take a look at those. Now, I wanna start off with Intel here. Their current lineup, the 11th generation chips, like I said, aren't fantastic. There are a few sort of gems in the bunch, but especially when it comes to their top end, they're really struggling. Their top end chip offers just eight cores or half the number of cores that AMD's top end does while drawing well over two times the power. That's not great. Now on their server side, their, their workstation and enterprise customers, they buy Xeon chips and they've actually just launched, at least at the time of filming, a new lineup of third generation Xeon scalable chips. Those are the server ones that run another one to I think four socket configurations, although I, I might have read eight, but either way, multi CPU in one system configurations. And they're now offering up to 40 cores up from 28 although doesn't quite match AMD's 64. They are, however, offering 64 PCIe lanes, although, again, that doesn't quite match AMD's 128, although I should make it clear, the way that AMD does multi-socket configurations, they use 64 of those 128 PCIe lanes to connect the chips together, and so they own, each chip only has 64 available, whereas I think Intel still uses a sort of proprietary connection to connect the two CPUs, and so they should also have 64 available. They now do also support four terabytes of RAM, uh, a now maximum of 270 watt TDP, which actually isn't too bad in the server space. And considering it's got a lot more cores than last gen, it's not too much of a TDP bump. And possibly more importantly, it's running on Intel's 10 nanometer process using their Ice Lake architecture. Now I should probably make it clear that Intel's 10 nanometer process isn't the same one as their soon to be released Intel 10 nanometer enhanced super thin process. They are slightly different and the 10 nanometer one is the one that they've been working on for I guess a little bit longer, it's a little bit older, slightly more mature and clearly a bit more ready for well I guess slight more volume, be better yields to support those larger chips. Although it's my understanding that because there is only one SKU with 40 cores it might be closer to one of those sorts of Halo products that you see on the spec sheet, but don't necessarily see in the real world. So that's their current platform. But what can we what can we look forward to? Well, on the desktop side, as that's where we see most of these rumors, specifically in 2021, at least according to Intel themselves, they are planning on releasing their next gen architecture, which is Alder Lake. And that is due to be on their 10 nanometer enhanced super thin process node. That is the, the more dense, the more, well, the newer, fancier, better uh, version. And while they haven't said that they're planning on launching, when they said they, they're planning on launching Alder Lake CPUs, they haven't mentioned if those are going to be the mobile chips or the desktop ones. I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be the mobile chips first, uh, as we've seen 11th gen chips come out this year. And so having two generations of CPU launches in the same year seems a little fast for Intel. I could be wrong, and I'd be happy to be proved wrong, but that's my, my sneaking suspicion. Now those new Alder Lake chips are, for lack of a better word, 
word, a complete revolution in how Intel designs and builds their CPUs. Specifically, they are going to be using the same sort of big little configuration that ARM uses in pretty much any phone for the last like five years and that Apple is using in their M1 and their M line of CPUs. Now that configuration from Intel is called Intel Hybrid Technology. We have technically seen that before, but this is a very new way for Intel to, to go about building a CPU. Basically, they're using what are essentially the same core design. So uh, th this current generation, 11th gen, uses Cypress Cove cores. Those are, I believe, the Sunny Cove or Golden Cove cores that have been backported to work on 40 nanometer. These new chips, the Alder Lakes, will use Golden Cove cores, so very similar in design. And there will be a maximum of eight of those like we, cur we see currently. But more importantly, they're going to be using up to eight Gracemont cores, which are uh, much smaller, much more uh, high efficiency, lower power, but also lower power in terms of their uh, performance as well. Those are going to be put together in up to eight and eight, so up to 16 core configurations. Although much like Apple's M1, which is an eight core, in my testing with the M1, the efficiency cores only added up to 1.5 to two times or two uh, high power cores worth of performance. So that's more of a, a 5.5 or six core uh, chip in its performance rather than the, the eight core that they're quoting. And I suspect that Intel's new Auto Lake chips will be relatively similar. Now, like I said, the Auto Lake chips are due to be running on Intel's 10 nanometer enhanced super thin process node, which should bring a good amount of efficiency and a bit better clock speeds too. That should mean that we're getting a lot more out of those Golden Cove cores than we're currently getting with the, the, the backported Cypress Cove cores in Rocket Laker 11th gen. What's also interesting is that according to the leaked slide from Video Card Z, well, it looks like there's going to be a whole load of new technologies stuffed in here. It's going to support DDR4 at the same 3200 megahertz as we see here, but more importantly, it will support DDR5 up to 4800 megahertz using DDR5 modules. It's also apparently going to support PCI Gen 5, which is kind of a first, uh, and it's going to have 16 PCI Gen 5 lanes to the CPU, and then four PCI Gen 4 lanes for, I assume, an M.2 slot, again, directly to the CPU. For me, I, I think I would rather have that the other way around because storage is always gonna be the, the thing that gets faster first and you know more immediately available, but either way, it still doesn't matter because you still don't need any more than a really good SATA SSD or maybe a, a an average Gen 3 drive, so still doesn't matter. We're also gonna see a new DMI link, DMI 4.0, as opposed to the 3.0 that we've seen from the last like five plus years. Uh, that link is going to be uh, obviously much faster, basically in line with PCI Gen 4, and it's also going to be up to 8x in configuration, like we saw with the, the current Z590 boards, which are DMI 3.0 8x, which again was a first because before that we only saw up to 4x. We're also going to see Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 support directly built into the, the chipset, which will be interesting to see, but potentially more important than anything else, is the new socket. It's got 500 more pins. It's LGA 1700 instead of the 1200 that we have currently, which means that yes, you will definitely need a new motherboard. Also what's interesting is that the rumor suggests Z690 boards, the top end ones will come with PCI, uh, will come with DDR5 supports, whereas the cheaper lower end ones are gonna come with DDR4 slots. That's kind of interesting. It makes a lot of sense because when DDR5 does become available in a thing, it's gonna be a lot more expensive to buy, you know, eight, 16, 32 gigs of DDR5 than it will be the existing already mass manufactured DDR4. So if you're building a budget system, this might actually be great news for you. Now, like I said, Intel has stated that they are planning on launching older lake based CPUs in 2021 specifically in Q4, so October, November, or December. Although, like I said, they haven't made it clear whether that's gonna be desktop or laptop chips. I think because of the big little configuration, offering this as a laptop first chip 
is probably going to make more sense. It's probably going to be an, an easier selling point for that added efficiency when you're doing those light use cases or you know word, word processing, web browsing, maybe even just watching videos. Uh, and then when you need to do something intensive, the bigger course can kick in. That's probably going to be an easier easier sales pitch than sending out all out you know 250, 300 watt chips. To, to people like me to run through a blender, right? So that's my expectation. Uh, with that said, the, the next generation, so 2022, maybe pushing into 2023, is going to be called Raptor Lake. And that's basically a refresh. It's meant to have the same Golden Cove cores, potentially even the same Grace Monk, uh, Grace Monk cores with um, uh, sort of a few modifications or a few enhancements. But it's going to be pretty much the same thing, except it's due to drop support for DDR4 and only support DDR5. The year after that, that's when we see a bigger change with newer core designs. I believe that's going to be called Meteor Lake. And that's also due to be on their 7 nanometer enhanced super thin process node, which should again bring better power efficiency, density, and clock speeds. For me, I'm going to be very interested to see how that big little or Intel hybrid technology uh, setup work from a, a desktop perspective. Like I said, I totally get it from a laptop perspective and having better power efficiency on mobile chips is going to be very nice. Although with that said, uh, AMD is doing a pretty impressive job there. Uh, but from, the, from a desktop perspective, those Golden Cove cores are meant to be very similar to the ones that we're seeing in the, the Rocket Lake 11th gen chips. Admittedly, these are at 40 nanometer and so the efficiency isn't great. But even if we see 20 or 30% better efficiency by shrinking them back down to 10 nanometer, that's still not going to be fantastic. That's still gonna be way more, I suppose, power hungry than even AMD's true 16 core. And I'm also a little bit worried about how it's gonna be marketed. Like I said, Apple's M1 chip is marketed as an eight core and it does have eight cores in it, unlike AMD's FX processors, but it's not eight cores worth of performance. And that's gonna be the same for Intel. These are likely to be marketed as 16 core parts, but when you compare them to something like AMD's 5950X, which is a, a true 16 core, well, it's gonna get absolutely demolished unless the IPC is significantly better and clock speeds so that you can kind of catch up. Now, speaking of AMD, let's talk about them. Their current position in the market, especially from the mid to high end, is what I would call a commanding victory or a commanding lead at the moment. Their fifth generation Ryzen chips are pretty much the go-to and they're actually becoming in stock as well. At least the 5600X and 5800X are, the 59 and 5950 are both still more spotty for stock, although the reason for that is likely due to them being dual die or dual chiplet uh, CPUs. So AMD has the choice of either manufacturing two 5600Xs and 5800Xs or one 59 or 5950X. So I assume they're gonna manufacture two of the other ones instead. With that said, they are incredibly impressive chips. And well, especially on the lower end with the, the 5600, I think its price point is still a, a little high for the, the market. And especially now Intel's 11600K and especially 11400K are out. I would really like to see them bring out a 5600 non-X to, to properly compete in that space. But again, from that mid to high end you know, price range, and especially on laptops, they're absolutely killing it. So what about their future? Well, interestingly, the launch that's due to happen next is actually their Ryzen 5000 Threader Pro chips. Those are their sort of workstation class parts, which offer up to 64 cores, although realistically, not many people buy the 64 core one. Uh, it's just not, it, it's very niche. The 32 core seems to be a lot more popular and that's gonna be very interesting to see. Now, there are a couple of uh, versions of the rumor for these new CPUs. All of the rumors suggest that it's coming out in August, but one rumor suggests that it's just gonna be a Zen 3 version of standard Threader, uh, the Threadripper layouts, uh, which will mean that the uh, chips will have a 90% IPC improvement over last gen and potentially a little bit better in terms of clock speeds 
uh, and boost and, and all that sort of stuff. But the other version of the rumor is that it's based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture that's also due to come out in sort of Q4 of 2021. That is due to be a slight change, enough that it's going to require a full new socket, both on desktop and I assume on Threadripper as well, but also is going to be a slight bit ahead in IPC. It's due to be slightly better than the, the gap from Zen to Zen Plus, but not by much. So we're looking at like 4 to 7% IPC on top of the 19 we've already seen from 3rd Gen. So that could be very interesting. But it's also, at least Zen 3 Plus, is due to only support DDR5, and so that might lead to some interesting compatibility issues. Now Zen 3 Plus, like I said, is due to come out in Q4 of 2021, and like I said, is due to be around 4 to 6% faster IPC overall, so a nice little bump, but nothing extraordinary. It is, however, meant to have a new IO die, at least rumoured anyway, that will be similar but not the same one that we'll see with Zen 4, but more specifically, it will support, or potentially only support, DDR5, which means a full new socket and uh, AM5 will be coming about, uh, and therefore DDR5 only compatibility, which may lead to, again, interesting compatibility issues. Now, the one thing to note is that Zen 3 Plus is due to use TSMC's N6 node, which is 6 nanometer and is more of a, a sort of half step than a, a true new node. It's slightly better, slightly you know, more efficient, so that the better clock speeds can be expected, but it's not the full jump to TSMC's N5 or 5 nanometer node that we're expecting for Zen 4. One interesting spanner in the works in that whole theory is actually a filing that uh, Gigabyte did to e the EEC uh, for certification and compliance of X570S motherboards. Now in theory the S stands for silent which is uh, due to be a slightly more efficient version of the X570 chipset meaning you don't need a chipset fan. Now that's really cool but it doesn't quite make sense why these are only just about to go into production and be launched if it's true that Zen 3 Plus is going to be on a full new socket and therefore full new boards, assumedly X670 uh, boards coming out in just Q4. Like it's going to be at least Q2 if not Q3 before we see these X570S boards be available but then if we're moving to a full new you know, board and layout just a couple months later seems a little close for comfort. If I have to throw my own skeptics hat in the ring here I would potentially argue that it might make more sense for Zen 3 Plus to use the, the AM4 socket as a, a last hurrah, as a slight increase, slightly better option, but hold out for a new version, so a new board, new socket, AM5, all that sort of stuff, for Zen 4. To me, that makes slightly more sense as having a new, uh, a slight bump in performance for a new chip, but on a new platform, makes about as much sense as Intel's jump for Coffee Late Refresh, which was 10th gen, and that, like, Z490 boards really didn't make sense. They often promised features that were going to be available from these new 11th gen chips, but then when these chips came out, none of that came to fruition. And so it, it doesn't make sense to me that you would jump to a, a new socket for a half-step processor. So... To, to my brain, it makes a bit more sense that uh, X570S is going to be that refresh chipset that will support, you know, Zen 3 Plus chips, and then the X670 for AM5 will support Zen 4. Of course, that is my entire conjecture and is contrary to some of the rumors that we've already heard, specifically the bit about Zen 3 Plus having a new IO die that supports DDR5, which obviously isn't compatible on X570, so... It will be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, as with everything on the rumor mill side of things that I'm talking about here, take everything with a grain of salt because it's all rumors. Now, speaking of rumors, Zen 4 was rumored to be very tasty. It's due to have 25% more IPC, which is just mind-blowing considering we just saw 19% of from going from Zen 2 to Zen 3. And up because it's running the 5 nanometer process node from TSMC, it's due to have 40% more performance thanks to apparently, at least in theory, up to 5 gigahertz clock speeds. 
which is insane. We've actually seen a leaked Zen 4 Epic chip, which was the Genoa or Genoa um, architecture. That was 29% faster than a comparable Milan Epic chip, which is Zen 3. And so that looks really exciting. That's due for 2022, which is obviously next year, but it's, if Zen 3 Plus does come out uh, in your Q Q4 of 2021, we can expect that it will be you know, Q3, Q4 of 2022 before we see those new chips. For me personally, I'm very excited to see both a bit of Zen 3 Plus, that's gonna be an interesting little sort of TikTok bump, but more importantly, Zen 4 is, is the main showpiece that a lot of people are, are sort of waiting for and very interested in. For me, I think the timing is gonna be, uh, again, very interesting to see because supposedly Intel is launching Rocket Lake in late 2021, probably the start of 2022, right around the time that AMD is going to be launching Zen 3 Plus. So it's going to be a, an absolute revolutionary new design for Intel, while AMD is launching a, a slight evolution, a slight spec bump, performance bump. And so I think that the, the marketing and the buzz around those Intel chips, even if they aren't actually as good as the Ryzen ones, I think that the buzz is going to be a lot bigger because of the new design and the, the, the total you know, revamps supporting PCI Gen 5, DDR5, and the new big little design. I think the buzz is going to be a lot bigger, but I will be very interested to see how the performance, you know, stacks up, and especially on the efficiency front. For me, I think Intel is on the right direction here. I think it's going to take a few years before we get back to them being sort of directly comparable, or at least uh, in terms of the, the, the price to performance and the uh, performance per watt. I think that's it's going to take a few years, and I think that AMD might have a slight advantage by using TSMC, who's obviously developing their process nodes with a whole load of other companies like Qualcomm, um, whereas Intel is sort of struggling it alone. I think that they might have a slight advantage there, and especially when they do go to 5 nanometer for Zen 4, effectively, what, six, eight months, uh, six, nine months after Intel goes to 10 nanometer. I think that will be very telling to see how far, uh, I guess, ahead or potentially behind AMD will end up being and the, the, the arms race to, to go smaller and faster uh, will, will ever continue. Either way, I'm incredibly excited. Being in tech at the moment is fantastic and while obviously we're still dealing with stalking issues, I certainly am very excited to, to be a part of this, to be playing with this new tech and uh, being able to, to share it with you guys. I would love to hear your thoughts about the, these sort of rumors, the, the future of, of both Intel and AMD, and also their current platforms. What do you think of Ryzen 5000 versus Intel's 11th gen? Of course, what do you think of Alder Lake versus Zen 3 Plus and therefore Zen 4? I would love to hear your thoughts in those comments down below. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be leaving links to all of the sources that I've used for the, the rumor mill stuff in the description if you wanna check them out and read on further. Uh, and there's also gonna be a load of other links in the description you can check out, ways to support the channel. Of course, this video isn't exactly the, the easiest for me to, to, to monetize or fund, so feel free to check out those links. There is a load of different options from affiliate links for places like Amazon, Overclock UK, there's even VPN options, Humble Bundle, uh, web hosting, a load of stuff you can check out that doesn't cost you anything extra to be supporting me. Or if you do want to support me directly and get cool stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, feel free to take a look. I designed this myself in Photoshop. It took way too long, but I'm very happy with the result. I, I do love it. Um, so feel free to check that out. There's also Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, uh, sponsor free videos, and of course you support me directly, directly too. And uh, that's pretty much it. Do check out the Rocket Lake reviews on the end cards and see how they stack up in terms of performance, at least right now. And if you have any questions, do feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.